Biofin is going to educate and train major senior policymakers in how they can be more efficient and more smart and more wise on how we invest around nature conservation. As a, as a former minister, I, I very easily get to the conclusion that Biofin is uh, what I needed when I was minister. In the sense that, you know, ministers of environment need to be able to understand that the way to really mainstream biodiversity conservation and protected areas in the development, in development policies and plans, we need to be able to generate information in a language that is understood by other major policy makers, particularly on the fact that we need to overcome the challenging impression that environment budgets are seen as costs rather than a good sound investment. So Biofin is generating a lot of information that will help us really uh, achieve many different uh, possible potential outcomes. One is you know, being able to really understand how you can better mobilize resources, what are the gaps that you have and how you mobilize resources, but also n not necessarily re resources coming from the national budgets, but uh, from all possible sources. The second is, you know, uh, through Biofin, you began engaging three agencies that need to work closer together. Planning agencies, uh, finance agencies, and environmental agencies. If you're able to bring them together in a very consistent manner by which you can increase the way you, you plan and um, you budget, uh, you can be able in a very uh, short time increase the you know the environmental outcomes and um, uh, and uh, have a very positive income in terms of administrating the protected areas protecting nature and also restoring nature avoiding the problems of um, production and consumption and biofin is going to let people understand how you can be more efficient how do you can uh, invest uh, better and execute better because this is something that ministers of finance uh, put a lot of attention. If you don't expend correctly, efficiently, you won't be able to have the ear of the minister of finance when, when you need it. Talking the same language they talk. Ministers of finance are, how do I say, they are like reptiles, are cold-blooded. They don't show emotions, they only want facts, they only want numbers, they want to know how much you will receive out of this or that investment, how you can be more efficient, how you can generate more resources. When I learned that that was their language, I began putting you know, the information of protected areas and species in numbers. I, I did, um, did some research on the economic benefits of protected areas in terms of tourism and carbon and water, and immediately, poof, I got them under my Hands. We tend to see the productive system and competitiveness in growth as, as, a, as a line. It starts here, gets here. But, but ministers of finance are unable to see the, a, a lot of hidden elements that are underlying and supporting the whole system of production, the whole economy. Without uh, fresh water, you won't have healthy people. Without water, you won't have energy. Without parks and biodiversity, in the case of my country, you won't have tourism. You, you need the, the very complex web of life and systems that generates uh, soil for the agricultural sector, the pest control, I mean, the, the gene pools in the forest for improving our seeds and our production in order to feed the people. Those are all kind of invisible benefits that are somewhere there that we need to be able to bring them and, and make it visible. There are many ways you can make it visible, but one that has worked with Minister of Finance is basically putting it on, on, on economic terms, the economic benefit out of having those services or, on the other case, uh, the economic cost of not taking decision. So what is the economic cost of losing water out of deforestation in a watershed. I mean, that's that can be easily put uh, in front of the minister and he cannot reject the facts.